shoot the PC thing and we shake the neighbor's hand or anything like that. So, uh, well, why not? Yeah, I wouldn't want anybody to come here alone. So, uh, go ahead and give the person next to you a high five and say, you're amazing for getting up on a Saturday morning. <laughs>
Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to your Lose to Win Challenge. We got a, a lively bunch this morning. I didn't have to make you do the good morning twice or do the cheesy thing where you shake your neighbor's hand or anything like that. So, uh, well, why not? Yeah, I wouldn't want anybody to come here alone. So, uh, go ahead and give the person next to you a high five and say, You're amazing for getting up on a Saturday morning. You're amazing for getting up on a Saturday morning. <laughs> It never ceases to amaze me um, how many smiling faces and just, just the amazing people that we get to serve in what we do. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Dr. Matt Brom. I'll be your host for today's event. We have five doctors that are going to be speaking for you here today. So I'm just going to turn your attention to that little blue packet that you got. If you can pull out this lose to win guide, you'll be able to start to familiarize yourself with the doctors and your team that's here to serve you today and uh, start teaching you some, some amazing weight loss, healthy weight loss principles. And, and that's really what today's event is all about. However, if you can, if you have a bad habit that you want to lose, maybe it's not the weight that you need to lose, but you can apply these same principles, just filter it through your need and what you need to do. So if you're here to apply the five essentials lifestyle, you're in the right spot. If you're looking for the magic bullet, we don't have that for you this morning, okay? But I am here to show you a system that works, that does a great job. You'll see for my, my, myself, you know, I'm very transparent about the struggles that I've had historically with my weight and managing that. This is probably one of the best systems that I've found to help me be able to uh, stay in an ideal weight and, and uh, you know, keep my energy levels up and productivity. So you'll see the, the other doctors, um, they're all lean and mean and cut. So I was able to surround myself with some people that, that really know how to apply this system to its fullest. So whether you're starting out like me, where I was you know, initially 80 pounds overweight when I started doing this stuff, and you're still going through the journey or the process of working your way down at work, you're leaning and eating cut like some of these other doctors that you're going to see, um, this applies to all of us. We all need to live a healthier lifestyle. I, I firmly believe that that's a process and not a journey, and it's amazing when we can do that together as a community. Agree? Yeah. So you go through some of the struggles and the challenges and and uh, the victories and the successes and have those to share with other people in your life, that's really amazing. So we're going to be basing our system and our model on five essentials of maximized living. And so um, Dr. Dr. Chad is actually going to be coming up here in a minute, and he's going to be teaching you the maximized mindset principles when it comes to, uh, in regards to weight loss. Uh, then my, I'll, I'll be taking on the maximized nerve system essential, uh, Dr. Dr. Nick is going to be teaching you the nutrition section, and he's got some amazing fat-burning nutrition for you today. Has anyone heard of the concept called ketogenesis? Just raise your hand. Awesome. He's going to show you exactly how to apply that and the science behind why it works so well for not only weight loss, but tapping into that extra fuel source that we all have, right? And, and ironically enough, I, I had a flat tire yesterday. Anyone here have a flat tire before? Yes. I, I, I couldn't help but thinking that I was just really happy that it didn't happen this morning, right? <laughs> like on my way here, and I, you know, I'm already, you should have seen all the doctors are out here, they're pacing and they're practicing their words and doing everything. I, I love seeing that because it just shows me how much they care, how much they care about you guys and making sure that you get amazing results. So um, I bring up the flat tire story because Hopefully today we can help lose the spare tire around the midsection. That was kind of a good reminder for me on that, so uh, uh, I joke. Okay, uh, essential number four is going to be maximize oxygen and lean muscle mass. Dr. Derek is going to be spearheading that one. That's your fitness essential. And then Dr. Steven is going to polish things off with uh, minimizing toxins or maximizing detoxification essentials. And then I'll come back at the end. We'll summarize everything for you. I'll show you how to get the best result with implementing your guide. And we'll set you out into motion into the community for your 28-day challenge. How many of you knew that there was a 28-day follow-up challenge? To be honest. Okay, so about half the room. So the rest of you, that may be a little surprise to you. You thought you were showing up today getting two hours worth of information, and then voila, you're going to lose the weight, right? 
there's some extra work that has to go into to, to the system to make it happen. But uh, I want to challenge you with this. If you apply these five essentials over the next 28 days, the way that we've laid them out and tried to help you implement them here in this guide, then I will guarantee that you will be higher levels of energy, that you will feel more vitality, you'll have better health, you'll feel, you'll be able to rate yourself better, and you may even lose some weight at the end of it too. In fact, I guarantee if you follow this principle, if you have the weight to lose, you're going to start to see that come off. Okay? So the system and the model does work, but it has to be applied. So typically I find that there's uh, multiple versions of folks that sit out here and listen to the information. You got the, the person that comes in and they're just kind of checking things out and just good information, but I'll, I'll take from it what I think is good, and I'll go and apply that stuff, and we'll just see how this works, okay? Your, your next person is the person that says, uh, you know, I've, I've always struggled with this. I clearly haven't been able to do it right. I had a, a dozen weight loss books on the shelf, and uh, haven't been able to have success in this area of my life, so if you guys are the experts and you know how to do this, I'm going to follow this system exactly the way that you lay it out. And, and that's what I'm going to do. They're making that decision that that's what they're going to do when they come out here. And the third person is someone that says, um, well, I don't think any of this stuff is going to work anyway, so you know, I'm just here to kind of check it out. They're the ultimate skeptic that keeps their arms crossed the entire time. Really probably going to walk out and not be happy about anything, no matter what anybody were to say up here, unless they just said that they could snap their fingers and the weight would fall off, right? So where, no matter where you fall in that spectrum of, of the person that showed up today, um, I'm okay with it. I just want you to come in and start to absorb the knowledge and the information, but I'm going to challenge you on this one thing. Would you be willing to at least take an action step? So when you leave here today, that, that the information that you hear isn't just that. It's not just good information. It's not just knowledge that you're taking with you, but I want you to challenge yourself to find at least one area of action that you can make a change. Can we all do that? Raise your hand if you could do that today. Find at least one area of action to apply. And of course, the more areas that you apply, the better results you're going to get. We all know that. So the goal really is lifestyle transformation. We're trying to make a healthier, better you than you are today for tomorrow. 60, 70, 80, 90 plus years of good health, as little medications as possible, not needing a walker or a cane, but having the energy and the vitality and the quality of life to play with the grandkids and do the things that you want to do and really enjoy life. Am I talking to anybody out there? Okay, awesome. That's where I want to be. I want the grandkids to have to chase me down the beach when we're on vacation because they can't keep up, right? I don't want to have to be trying to find the energy to keep up with them. Um, so learn the five essential system that will help you maximize your potential for that. We've helped so many people be able to apply this stuff. Yeah, there's Chris right there. Wave, wave to everybody, Chris. Yep, there she is. So Chris, the picture up here. How many pounds have you lost, Chris? 35 pounds. She looks amazing, uh, by the way. Half a pound a day. Half a pound a day. So she was able to really see it melt off. Um, same thing with Lynn over here. Lost a total of 75 pounds. That wasn't just in the 28 day challenge, okay? That's the disclaimer. But she kept up with it, right? It's a lifestyle. Um, and so you want to uh, have it, form the routine, keep up and maintain the routine. She was able to lose the weight. And uh, Lynn, you know, doing amazing as well. So without further ado, um, I'd like to bring Dr. Chad Rexham to the stage. Dr. Chad is an amazing doctor, a very close dear friend of mine. And uh, if you guys wouldn't mind, just give him a warm, loud applause here. If you, if you can hear him. Today, uh, today we're going to be going over a lot of how, right? I'm sure a lot of people out there have already read a bunch of uh, fad diet books or something like that. Or you know, we, we know we're supposed to exercise more. We know we're supposed to you know eat better. But the mindset, in my eyes, is by far the most important thing you're going to learn today. Okay? So sorry to the other docs. If if you learn anything, take away what I'm about to say to you. Because mindset is literally your, your outlook on life, just the way you approach life. It really separates the men from the boys, right? It separates the achievers and the dreamers. It really separates the people who are really successful or the people who are just all about the talk. You know what I mean? So most important thing you're going to learn today is all about mindset because this really has the, 
potential to be life transforming, okay? You could take this as a lifestyle change and completely change your life to be better, to be awesome, to be important, to do the things you love, right? I'm sure there isn't a single person in here who says, someday I want to be in a nursing home, right? I don't think anybody wants to be like that. So if you're not happy with your life right now, it's time to make a change. You guys agree? Yes. Right, so who here wants to make a big change today? Awesome. So cool. Um, I, I know everybody has some type of blueprint already kind of laid out for their life. Okay, so if your blueprint is, you know, I want to do this, this, and this, and all of a sudden you take that, take that time to reflect and be like, look, my, my life isn't where I want it to be. I'm depressed, I'm sad, I just don't want to do anything about it. Your blueprint needs to change over time, right? So it's time to make a change now. So it really comes down to having, having a lifestyle change or, or, or changing with uh, like a challenge or some type of um, like, like a wrench that throws in your life or something like that, an obstacle. How are you going to avoid that or how are you going to embrace that, right? It's all about how you approach a challenge, approach an obstacle. So how we get into this is, is really how to create change. This is a great thing to write down because the first thing to do when you want to create change is you really have to be aware of it, okay? You have to be aware. So most likely it was probably January 1st, right, the first of the year. You probably woke up. You just spent the last 60, 61, 62 days eating sugar, stressed out, going to parties, right? Maybe gaining a little weight. So you wake up on January 1st and you're like, I'm fat, <laughs> right? They might do that. <laughs> or, oh man, I gained five pounds. It's just, it's just joking aside, but like it's just, it's you become aware of something that you're not happy with. Your, your blueprint hasn't you know, laid out the way it's supposed to. So, so it's just, of being aware and having that dissatisfaction that that you're not where you want to be. Okay, so be aware of it. So already you guys have probably uh, been aware of something. That's why you're here, right? So then you start investigating into okay, how can I lose a couple pounds, for example? So you go to your chiropractor, or you turn the radio on, or maybe you got this email and say, hey, 28 day weight loss challenge. You know. I gained five pounds of the holiday system, so holiday season. So I'm going to investigate into how to lose some weight, right? So you've already done awareness and investigation, which is amazing. Okay, so give your, yourself a hand in the back for investigating at least, and then you can show it up. I and mean, that's that's a huge part of it. The knowledge that I'm going to give you today, or all of us are going to give you today, is is uh, today, the, the presentation, the knowledge, okay? You're gonna get a lot of knowledge today. Basically, we're gonna take some type of uh, uh, like fire hose and we're gonna hook it up to you and you're, we're gonna get a lot of information to you today. So the knowledge is one, the presentation. The thing is, is there's potential to this information. You guys agree? Right, so the worst possible thing you can tell us after we're done is great information, Doc. Oh. We don't like that. It's like a dagger to the heart. Whatever you do, don't say good presentation or good information. We don't want this to be information, right? We want this to be life transforming. We want you to take action after this and put it you know, into your life and just make the changes that you need to. Okay, so please. Oh, if, if, if you say that to us, we're going to take your little guy with a ripper right up right in front of you. <laughs> so. So it's not good information. Use this stuff. It's got the potential to literally save your life. So, so say, say you change nothing. Just I want not to be a little graphic, but say you didn't change anything. You you, you stayed the same course you were at. You ate the same foods. You sat on the couch. You did all the wrong things. All this stuff, and you have a heart attack someday. Right. The next thing they're going to do. Hopefully, if you're still alive, you might have heart surgery where they crack your chest open and do surgery in heart. So, like, what if that that was your plan or that was your almost uh, destiny or, or, or fate? But what if you change something right now, right today, that you avoided that completely? Right? That's life saving, and that's why we're here today. Is literally save your life. We hear about people having heart attacks, being diagnosed with cancer, 
you know, get the sick all the time. And it's just like, if we could have just reached out to them and just made a much better effort or even, uh, you know, that's just got them to be motivated to, to make that change. Today is the day you make the change, right? So potential. Uh, motivation will be the next step, right? So we have, we have the why, we have the reason, you know, we have lots of motivational quotes. It, it really comes down to you know, where you want to end up and why you want to end up there. So we don't want to have you just lose five pounds because summer is coming around or that you have a high school graduation or a high school reunion coming up. That's not the real reason why you want to lose weight. We want you to lose weight so you can be healthier, be with your grandkids, do the things you love, you know, be a positive uh, in the society. So motivation is there for you, but again, it really comes down to the action you take today. This isn't information. This is stuff for you to take home and act on. It. Agreed? So action. We already talked about like war plan in the past seminars. Uh, where you actually schedule out your workouts, your nutrition, um, everything like that. So we got work plan out there, but it's really being about being disciplined because I came across a really cool quote here. We're, we're always going to have two pains in life, okay? One pain could be the pain of discipline, right? Of course, you're going to succeed and have a reward from discipline, or you're going to have the pain of regret, right? Disappointment. So I'd much rather have the pain of discipline and achieve something great than live or look back at my life and say, you know what, I'm, 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 I didn't do it right, I'm regretful, I didn't do that, stuff like that. So, so action. Next step is patience, right? Just like Dr. Matt said, we don't have a silver bullet for you or a silver pill or something like that. It's just, it's, it's, it's all about time and patience. It will happen. If you set these steps into place and take action, really the results, and you be patient about it, the results will come. It's really inevitable, so it's really cool stuff. Ultimately, I'd like to have you think about the end in mind. This is kind of a way to start getting you to uh, become aware of something you're unhappy with or something you want to change. So when you're on your rocking chair, when you're older, um, you have grandkids running around, you know, what kind of legacy do you want to leave? What, what, what do you want to have achieved in life? So think about an end in mind. We're all going to perish someday. It's hopefully not right now. Right? So an end in mind, think about you know, at the end of your years and looking back. So how much time do you have until then? What can you change today so that you can finally achieve that or be great? So keep that in mind. So legacy, achievement, retirement, in your rocking chair, and you know, really desire to make that change. So this is the mindset portion uh, where we, we break it up in growth and fixed mindset. This came from a book called Mindset by, by Carol Dweck. Uh, really groundbreaking information. And it really differentiates the basically the dreamer or the achiever or someone who's been successful or just kind of been talking about it or always been really frustrated. So when you look at your own talent, so most, most people will be like, you know, I, I have a talent, either I'm good at it or I'm not good at it, right? So I know a lot of people live in that kind of mindset, which is a fixed mindset. Uh, it's just a talent that I have, and that's all as good as I'm going to get. But the other side of it, you can have a growth mindset, and you can be like, well, what? I can learn anything. I can improve anything. And that really comes to the, the, the success side, the growth side. So that comes with talent. Also looking at challenges or obstacles. Again, the fixed side, you could be like, well, it's too hard, you know, I'm just gonna give up, or, you know, I, I see a challenge right there, I'm just gonna avoid it. I'm not even gonna challenge myself, right? If you don't challenge yourself, you don't improve. You guys agree? Okay. So perseverance, right, or embrace. You can embrace that challenge, you can embrace an obstacle, you can really make the, the big change and make it happen. When it comes to failure, right, um, I love the quote where the most successful people are those who've actually failed the most, right? So if you fail over and over and over and learn from it, you end up being successful eventually. So the more failures you have, the closer you are to success. So just keep failing. It's all good. Just keep going, keep going, keep going, but never stop. How many times are you going to fall and get back up, 
right? How many times did Brett Favre get thrown to the ground and got right back up? He was like 50 or 60 by the time he retired, right? Kind of right here. I don't know. If he's probably like 35 or something like that. Uh, but working hard, right? You, you get a good grade or something like that, and some people will say, well, uh, you're smart, that's why you got the good grade. But really, it's no, you worked really hard, right? My, my children go to a, a Waldorf, Waldorf school, and one of the first things they taught us was that your, your kids are going to bring you a bunch of paintings or pictures or crafts and stuff like that. The last thing you want to do is say, wow, that's amazing. Wow, you're so smart. That's the last thing you want to say. And I was like, what are you talking about? It's crazy. Right? So really, you want to actually be like, wow, you worked really hard on that. You did a great job. So like, if, if just recently my daughter brought home, uh, or brought a picture home, and instead of me saying, wow, you're amazing, you're smart, I said, well, can you improve on this? And sure enough, she improved on it, she worked on it, she ended up making it into a whole book, she had a whole story and everything like that, and then she, the, the teacher actually ended up reading it in front of the whole class, which is really cool, she's only six years old. So that was just a really neat example of that. Last thing, or another one would be the peer success. So most people will surround themselves or, or be near a coworker or a family or a friend or neighbor, and they almost feel threatened when that person succeeds, right? That's a, um, a fixed mindset. And if you surround your people and surround yourself with people and they're succeeding, and that inspires you to do better, that's the growth mindset. So this is kind of how I want to start changing you guys around from the fixed mindset and move you back up into like the growth mindset of improving yourself. And the last thing would be like abilities again. So just God gave you some abilities and that's just kind of how you're going to use it. Or is it the effort that you're going to use those talents, right? So those abilities, really put the effort into it. Okay? And the last thing it comes down to, to grit or learn helplessness. If you have got that fixed mindset, you literally have no hope, right? You're just, you're just down all the time, you're depressed, you, you're almost lying to yourself and not living up to your potential. But if you have grit, if you can get knocked down and get back up over and over and over and fail over and over and over and learn from your mistakes and improve and succeed, that's when you have grit, all right? So why? Uh, in your packet, you'll have a little spot where you can write down your why. The why is what is going to allow you to self-motivate, okay? So I know everybody's listened to uh, red fat diets or listened to speakers or you know got a gym membership or something like that and they quit or they don't take action. If you just went back to your why or your big why, you can self-motivate, you, you can push yourself forward, you can have that drive, you can have that grit. Okay, so so why? Why do you want to achieve this goal? So if your goal today or the 28 day challenge is to lose five pounds, it's not just to lose five pounds, why do you want to lose five pounds, right? Do you want to be healthier? Do you want to achieve something greater? Do you want to pass your faith onto your grandchild, therefore you have to be healthy for it? Yeah, that would be a much bigger why. You know, professionally, for, for our group here, our three offices, you know, our, our goal is to see um, unfathomable health through through Milwaukee. Okay, so just have health throughout Milwaukee, change the face of health when it comes to Milwaukee, and, and see health and see people you know, doing great things rather than seeing more and more people popping pain relievers and the obesity rates going higher and more cancer, more heart disease. Our goal is to see those things flip flop here in Milwaukee, and it starts with everybody here today. So big why. If you just take a moment and write down your big why, why you want to do this, why do you want to achieve a goal, and if you just write that down, and then every single time you have a goal or you're down, refer right back to that, that, that big why, okay? Every time you have some kind of setback, you can go right back to your why. So now you understand more of the growth mindset, I want to help transition this into nutrition, which Dr. Nick is going to talk about in a second. So kind of knocking out some myth, myths here. So most people say, well, um, if I eat a lot of fat, it will make me fat, okay? 
So that's a myth. So eating fat does not make you fat. Right? The truth actually is the inability to burn fat makes you fat. Okay? So I actually eat a lot of fats, right? healthy fats. We're going to get into that. But I want to become a fat burner, not a sugar burner. I can, I can make most of the that as well. So don't worry about the fat. We'll give you the exact ones. Also, we don't want you just to think only about weight loss when it comes to the scale. Uh, most people hop on the scale and start crying. I know that. <laughs> so we don't want you to think about it's all about the, all about the scale. It's really about body composition is, is the key when it comes to weight loss. So stick with that. Uh, I do have a short clip here. And this is a short clip. And it's going to go over the shortcomings of, of American food. Uh, system and even the mindset that we have towards eating and towards our food. And then uh, Dr. Nick is going to come up and, and start on the nutrition and get into the how. But again, I just want to remind you guys that, that this information that we have for you is literally life transformational. Right? If you can hold on to your why, the 20 day challenge and the results that you get from it uh, are going to be just extraordinary. And, and I wish you guys the best of luck. So. Thank you very much. Okay, with your nutritional expertise, the latest cutting edge on fat-burning nutrition, please welcome to the stage Dr. Nick Ellison. My name is Dr. Nick Ellison, and I, yeah, this is an amazing documentary if you've never watched this fed up. Um, as the, the trailer was going through, uh, we definitely need to make some changes when it comes to our nutrition. And um, a lot of that has to do with how much sugar we're consuming. So um, we're going to be going through a lot of information. So as uh, Dr. Chad was talking about, this may be one of those portions where it's going to be like a, a fire hose hooked up to the, the face with all the knowledge we're going to be going through. But um, Diets can be one of those things that can be very confusing when it comes to one day you'll hear about the vegetarian diet or the vegan diet or the high carbohydrate, high protein, high fat, and it's just which one is right. And one of the best 
ways to prevent disease, to ultimately have a healthy life, to reduce your chances of cancer, reduce your chances of heart disease, reversing uh, brain diseases like Alzheimer's, dementia. That's the type of diet that I'm going to be talking about today. And I almost hate to use the, the term diet. I almost like to just use more of a way of lifestyle of eating. So the diet that or lifestyle form of, of eating I'm going to be talking about is called the ketogenic diet or nutritional ketosis. Has anybody heard of that before? Okay, so pretty good portion of people have. So I'm just going to be going through some of the nuts and bolts, some uh, things you want to be aware of when you're doing ketosis and how to troubleshoot that. Because, uh, and this is something that's research back, research based as being a very effective diet. So there was a, uh, a journal article, Journal of American Medicine in 2012, looked at the three popular diets. So you have a low fat diet, high carbohydrate, you have a medium fat uh, group, and then a high fat, low carbohydrate diet. And when you look at the research, there is one way of eating that outshines all the rest. And that is the high fat diet, low carbohydrate which is going to go against the traditional uh, American way of eating. And um, with this study, all three groups ate the same amount of calories during this, this 30 days that they were doing it. And what they found is there's three really big things that showed up um, when they did this diet is the high fat diet, you burn the most calories. So who wants to burn more calories? Okay, so the whole myth about fat making you fat, you're, as Dr. Chad was talking about, we want to re retrain our bodies to be a fat burner, so you can actually burn more calories with a high fat diet. You're also going to be improving your sensitivity to insulin, and this was two times more than the low fat group. So if you don't know what how um, insulin sensitivity makes a big difference in the body, and how it's a big deal, is that when insulin is low, you can actually decrease inflammation. And inflammation, they say, is the cause of most diseases out there. So by reducing uh, insulin, we're gonna reduce our inflammation in our bodies, which is gonna decrease our chances of cancers, heart disease, diabetes, brain diseases. Um, and then uh, the other thing that was, you may find that was surprising is that you would think that when you're eating lots of fats, you're gonna throw off your, your blood levels on your lipid panels. Your triglyceride levels are gonna go through the roof, but it's in fact the exact opposite. So when you do this, what they found is that the average for the high fat group, their triglyceride levels, was at 66, versus the high carbohydrate, low fat diet, that was at 107. So it's, it's not fats that are gonna raise your triglycerides, your cholesterol levels, that's actually going to do the opposite, it's going to decrease. It's when you're eating over consuming sugars, that's when you're going to throw your cholesterol levels through the roof and your triglyceride levels through the roof. So it's, again, it's a complete opposite way of looking at things and thinking about things. So there's two types of energy that your body uses uh, to, to live and, and to, uh, to, to uh, survive on. And those things are sugar or glucose or fat being in the source of ketones, thus where the ketogenic diet comes from. It's your body's burning ketones um, for energy. And how you know whether you are a sugar burner or a fat burner, um, so say you eat lunch, and then an hour or two hours later, you're looking for the next snack or the next meal. You burn through all that sugar storage, and now you're, you're ravishly hungry again. Versus somebody who is a fat burner, this is somebody who can go through long periods without actually eating. And the way that you can do that is you're able to tap into your body's fat storage and you start burning that as your energy source. So it's, it's, it's a sustained energy source throughout the day. And you're not going to have the peaks and valleys as if you're a sugar burner. So again, with the standard food pyramid, this ketogenic diet is going to be the complete opposite. because what we've been told for the last 40, 50 years is that we need to have our six to 11 servings of grains and carbohydrates, sugars, and the complete opposite, where we're supposed to have very small amounts of fats on a daily basis. So this is what we've been taught. We need to undo a lot of this thinking. So, and this is uh, 
this is something that the FDA has actually been talking about, where this is the first time in over 40, 50 years where they're actually going against what they've been saying, where healthy fats are, aren't going to be triggering all the diseases that they originally thought it was. So this is going to be the breakdown of the ketogenic diet. So you're going to be eating about 70% fat, 20% protein, and then about 10% carbohydrates. And I always think, whoa, that's kind of a lot of fat, Dr. Ray. But we're going to be going through how we can make this applicable and uh, make it an easy transition. Because <laughs> when we overconsume sugar, as I mentioned in the video, it is that sugar basically stimulates the same part of the brain as cocaine. We get addicted to sugar. So it's, that's why we're always looking for that next fix as well. So when we overconsume sugar, that spikes your, your glucose levels which is going to increase your insulin levels, which is going to trigger you to stop burning fat, um, and then start storing fat, so increasing our fat storage, which is exactly what we don't want, and we're going to be teaching you how to avoid this. So and some of you may be thinking, okay, if we're supposed to remove sugar, what are we supposed to use for sweeteners? And um, you're, you, I don't want you to be replacing those with the artificial sweeteners, like. Splenda, Sweet and Low, Aspartame, those are actually neurotoxic to the brain. So when you're at the, or the um, restaurants, stay away from the, the yellow and pink and blue packets. That's those, those neurotoxic sweeteners. So some good healthy alternatives for sweetening things if you need to baking or want some sweetener. Stevia is one of my favorites. Stevia is about 300 times sweeter than sugar. So Start with a very little amount, and then you can slowly add it. And then xylitol and the swerve, which is actually erythritol, um, these are going to be more of a one-to-one -one, uh, conversion rate with sugar. Um, and some do better with stevia, some do better with xylitol or erythritol. Um, and then the last one is monk fruit, which is another healthy alternative. And you may see this as a different name. Lo Hung Gua is another name you might see. Monk fruit's a lot easier to say than uh, Lo Hung Gua. Um, but these are four excellent alternatives to using sugar. Uh, we've got some stevia uh, in the, in, uh, for sale up front um, if you've never tried it. So again, with that one, we want to start low and then work up. So fat, this is something that we need to address because fat has gotten a bad rap for the last 40, 50 years. And we need to retrain our thinking. And because during this time period, the rates of heart disease, cancer, all these different diseases have, are shooting through the roof. So uh, when, uh, I love uh, Mark Twain's quote is, when you find yourself in the majority, you need to stop, reflect, and do something different. So um, we need to be doing something different so we're not developing all these diseases. So, during this, this time, butter and meat consumptions dropped by 50%. Margarine consumption rose by 400%. Anytime I hear about margarine, all I can think about is, is Dr. Matt. And, uh, if you listen to the radio show, when you mentioned good healthy fats and talked about margarine, he talks about how his grandma used to do Pop-Tarts right. And what he means by that is she would take Pop-Tart, which is unhealthy just in itself, and then she would slather it with margarine and that's how they would eat them. So definitely definitely don't want to be doing this. Um, I'm, I'm glad that I've never had the opportunity to try that. Um, <laughs> um, but one thing to understand with margarine is that it's actually one chemical away from being plastic. So of course people are not in their bodies. I'm glad I just didn't even answer it. Um, so we want to be uh, need to understand the difference between bad fats and healthy fats. So bad fats, all the stuff you hear about fats being bad, that's going to fall into the line with those eating those bad fats. So bad fats, those are going to be hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated oils. So if you're reading a label of some food thing, like a salad dressing, you'll see this a lot on. If you see these oils or see the hydrogen, partially hydrogenated, put that back on the shelf. So that's going to be like cotton seed, soybean oil, vegetable oils, trans, trans fat, which is a lot of trans fats are in margarine or synthetic butters. Um, and the, a lot of times you'll see with the, the low fat labeling, a lot of times it'll, it'll 
one thing that will company that accompany this is a trans fat free on a, on a box that looks really good. And that's that's always a warning sign to me that that's something I don't want to be eating because um, food labels are, are very tricky. They um, are able to put trans fat free on there if it's 500 milligrams or less. So to get around this, what they will do is actually decrease serving sizes so below the four or 500 milligrams, so they can still put that fantasy label on the front of the box. So watch watch for that. Um, the other rancid vegetable oils, corn oil, canola oil, um, you want to avoid that. It's actually not a canola plant. It comes from rapeseed, which the majority of rapeseed has been genetically modified, so we want to stay away from that. Um, and then what makes the rancid oil is it's something that's been treated with high temperatures or chemicals, which makes it a rancid oil. Um, the other way that you can make a healthy fat rancid is if you're using coconut oil and all of a sudden it starts smoking, it's reached its smoke point, that's a sign that oil has gone rancid, gone bad, so you want to dump that out and start over. So some good healthy alternatives to um, the bad fats, those are going to be things like extra virgin olive oil. You want to look for that down the label, the extra virgin or virgin, that means it's got a, the least amount of processing to it. Um, avocados, avocado oil, coconut, coconut oil, coconut milk. Uh, one of my favorite ways to eat avocados is to cut it in half, take up the pit that's in the middle, and then there's a little depression naturally in there from the seed. It's all take and make it into little squares. Just be careful when you're doing that with a knife uh, so you're not going through the skin. Um, what I'll do then is drizzle some olive oil on top and then sprinkle some Himalayan sea salt and then I'll take a spoon and then eat that up like that. That's, that's one of my favorite ways. It's an easy, healthy snack, getting lots of good fats with that. Um, and then um, coconut oil, avocado oil, those are good, excellent cooking oils that have a high smoke point. Um, extra virgin olive oil, I'm not a big fan of cooking with that because it has a lower smoke point. Um, raw nuts and seeds, good healthy fats in those. MCT oil, I'll talk a little bit that, about that in just a minute. Eating real butter, not margarine. So looking for grass-fed um, butter. So Kerrygold is a good source. You can find that at like Trader Joe's. Um, I've heard people have been able to see that at Mayu, sometimes at Walmart. Um, and then Organic Valley is another alternative that's really good too. If you can't find Kerrygold. Um, looking for raw cheeses, yogurts. Looking for whole fat milk, whole fat yogurt whole fat cheese, because again, we need those good fats in our diet. And if it's something like yogurt, want to look for something that's plain, use some stevia or a xylitol, throwing some berries in there to sweeten it yourself. Getting some good fatty fish, so wild caught Alaskan salmon versus Atlantic salmon. Atlantic, Atlantic salmon, that's typically farm raised, so you want to avoid that because they've been fed grains. Um, and then sardines are another good source of, of fish. And the other thing, other little tips and tricks on how to get some extra fats in the diet. Um, what I'll do is if I make a salad or if I roast some veggies, I'll take and drizzle some extra oil on top after they're like the roasted veggies after they've been roasted. I'll drizzle some olive oil, put some butter on there. Um, I will uh, like a salad. I'll put some avocados on there. Put some um, extra virgin olive oil. Put some avocado oil, some MCT oil. So you can still take something that uh, doesn't have any fat, and you can still add those things to it. Um, so MCT oil. Has any, anybody ever used MCT oil before? So there's a good portion. So if you've never heard about MCT oil, um, it's essentially coconut oil that they've taken out the MCT, and the MCT stands for medium chain triglycerides. You got short chain, long chain, and the medium chain. So that's what we're talking about is the medium chain portion. Portion. This is something that's very easily utilized and turned into ketones in the body. So like with a long chain fat, that's going to be something that's digested in your intestines versus MCT, that's going to be digested in your liver. So it's very fastly digested, very easily utilized, and amazing energy for the brain. It's one of those oils that's going to help, again, with any type of oil, you're going to help uh, keep that satiety, so it's going to fill you up so you're not having cravings. Um, like I mentioned, it's really good for the brain. 
So when you have something like Alzheimer's, dementia, your body doesn't process, your brain doesn't process sugar very well. And that's where ketones can come into play, because your body does, and your brain does really well on ketones. And uh, we need those good healthy fats, especially when these diseases, because 70% of our nervous system is made out of fat. We need to be getting good healthy fats in. Um, even if somebody has had their gallbladder removed or gallbladder issues, people typically do really well with MCT oil. Again, because it's digested in the liver versus the intestine. Um, but uh, easy way to still do like more ketogenic type diet and have gallbladder issues is making sure that you're taking a digestive enzyme that has lipase in there. Lipase is the digestive enzyme that helps to break down lipase or lipids and fats. <clears throat> so this is a warning about MCT oil. Most people, again, have never really used MCTs before. So it takes a little bit for your body to be able to digest it and get used to it. So the first week, couple weeks, uh, you want to start slow and then build up. Because if you drink a little bit too much too fast, you can have what I call disaster pants. Um, <laughs> we don't want that to happen. So make sure you start slow. So usually you can do about a, a tablespoon or two a day. But if you're starting out, start with a teaspoon or less. So you've been warned. <laughs> so basically with a ketogenic diet, so you're restricting your, your carbohydrates. You've got a storage of carbohydrates in your muscles. Those are stored in glycogen. Uh, glycogen is broken down into glucose. And once you burn through that uh, storage, then your body is going to be looking for another alternative. So that's where it starts breaking down fats of, into free fatty acids. And then in the liver, your liver is going to produce the ketones. And then your body, your brain, your muscles can use the ketones for its energy source. Um, and this is something that's not, you don't have to worry about it breaking down muscle. You're going to spare your muscle, but you're also going to be burning fat, which is what, again, what we all want to be doing. So some other benefits with the ketogenic diet, because you're eating lots of fats, you're going to uh, fix your hunger cravings, your sugar cravings. And as with any type of transition, you may have what we call and refer to as your sugar monsters in your body. Again, it's as addictive as, or lighting up the same areas of the brain as cocaine. So there's going to be a withdrawal period. So you may see the, the sugar monster there for a little while. You're going to um, lack hunger. And this is something that uh, uh, yesterday, yesterday was the, I had my adjusting hours, and then I had a bunch of errands that I needed to run and wasn't uh, able to eat anything. And then it, it was about 5 o'clock, and I was like, oh, I haven't even eaten anything today. Um, and so because I trained my body to be a fat burner, um, I wasn't hungry at all. I didn't notice that I didn't even eat. The only thing that I had was some bulletproof coffee, and I'll explain what that is and how you can still be a fat burner and still be getting a little bit of, of something in on your day. But I didn't eat any actually solid food. It's going to help with drop your, dropping your cholesterol, lowering triglycerides, dropping blood sugars, insulin, um, which we talked about on the, the previous study. It's going to help with decreasing stiffness with joints and joint pain. So how this can affect that is when, if you don't know this, sugar creates inflammation. So any areas that are you have issues in, that inflammation is going to go to those areas and flare those up and cause pain and discomfort. So if we're removing those things, we're also going to start feeling a lot better. And when I started doing the more ketogenic type diet, the one thing I really noticed is a clear brain. Like, there's like the dimmer switch started going on and was thinking a lot more clear. Um, better sleep, and of course, the big thing on what we're talking about today is weight loss. Now, some of you may have heard of something called ketoacidosis. This is something that's totally different than ketosis or nutritional ketosis. So I like to think of uh, diabetic ketoacidosis as a uncontrollable forest fire versus nutritional ketosis. That's going to be more a small controlled campfire. So <coughs> medical emergency, diabetic ketoacidosis. So that's somebody who hasn't had proper amounts of insulin and body starts going into full-blown ketoacidosis where your levels for ketones are going to be 15 to 25 versus nutritional ketosis, which is going to be 0.5 to 5. So 
not safe, safe. And ketones are, are a much cleaner energy source. Again, I said earlier that if you have a brain or neurological disease, bodies are a lot better with ketones because it is a much cleaner energy source for the body. So in order for your body to take some, uh, take some sugar and turn that into something that the body can utilize, it takes about 26 steps to convert that into ATP, which is the body's energy source, versus ketones, which is three steps. So it's a lot more efficient. So it's a lot cleaner burning. So think of burning sugar as burning wood or coals, very smoky, very dirty. And think of burning ketones as like something like natural gas, very clean energy source. And one of the things that originally turned me on to the ketogenic diet, uh, some of you may know, some of you probably don't know this, but I've run some ultra marathons. So I've been marathons, I've ran about eight marathons, ran 250Ks, which is 31 miles, and I've also ran uh, two 50 mile races. So you hear a lot about in the running world about bonking or hitting the wall. This is the period of time, or what happens after you burn through that glycogen storage, and now your brain is wondering what the heck is going on. Where's, where's, the, where's the next meal at? It starts going into freak out mode. And so one of the ways you can actually avoid this bonking or hitting the wall is being a fat burner. So a good analogy for this, so say if you're a sugar burner, and you're driving the big truck with the big gas tank down the road, and all of a sudden the small tank that the gas or the truck is running off of runs out of gas and dead in the water, can't do anything. But you have this huge tank in the back, but you're not able to tap into that source. So again, you're stuck, you're dead in the water, can't do anything. So when you're a fat burner, if, even if you have a very low body percent fat or body percentage of fat on your body, um, say you're at six, seven percent, you still have 40,000 plus calories to burn. Um, versus somebody who's a sugar burner, they only have about 2,000 uh, uh, calories of, of glycogen stored in their bodies that you burn through very quickly. So I wanted to avoid the whole bonking process so that's why I started doing the ketogenic diet. And um, the last 50 mile mar ultra marathon that I did, uh, even though I lost my lunch twice, I threw up, something wasn't agreeing with my stomach, I still completed the 50 mile race faster than the year before, even though I had lost everything twice. So my body was definitely in a ketogenic state. So, uh, uh, definitely can go long periods without having to eat, which I really love. So you can do something very easily to do this diet, and uh, Jen put a lot of time in putting this booklet together, putting all the recipes in here, making a meal plan. This is something I wish I would have had when I started doing the ketogenic diet. I had to figure out it all on my own. So we need to give Jen a round of applause for putting this book up together. So thank you, Jen. Um, again, she made it very easy for you. So if you simply follow the meal plan, follow the recipes, you're pretty much going to be getting into ketosis. But if you're somebody who's analytical like me and wants to be testing everything, make sure you're making sure that you're actually getting into ketosis, you can actually buy um, uh, these ketone strips so you can actually measure your ketone levels in your urine because one of the byproducts of ketones are going to be in your urine so you can actually measure those to see if you're in ketosis and don't worry we're not going to have anybody come up here and demo the, the ketone strips this is a family establishment um, so there's definitely a key, key range or key window that we want to be in with ketosis um, so 0.5 to five is the range that we want to be in for ketosis. Um, again, ketoacidosis is going to be in the danger zone, plus, uh, plus 10, greater than 10. Um, but the optimal zone for ketosis being at 1.5 to three, that's the sweet spot where the body really performs well. So that's what we want to be shooting for. So some troubleshooting things. Um, 
As your body is transitioning, or what's called keto adapting or keto adaptation, body is getting used to using ketones versus sugar, there is a, a, a time period where you may experience what's called a keto flu. And this isn't the actual flu, so you don't have to worry about getting sick on this. Um, so with the keto flu, you can experience some fatigue, some headaches, coughing, sniffling, irritability, some dizziness, some brain fog, just not feeling right. And this can happen for a couple reasons. The first one is, again, your body's used, getting used to burning ketones versus sugar, so you can experience some of the sugar monster symptoms, some detox, some withdrawal symptoms from sugar and carbohydrates. Um, the other reason is your body's transitioning to burning or digesting a lot more fats. Um, and then the other thing, which is probably the biggest thing, is it's, I don't know why the, the, the kidneys do this, but when you're eating lots of sugars, carbohydrates, your body actually retains electrolytes and water, versus when you're in ketosis, your body starts dumping electrolytes and dumping water. So, a couple things to counteract the, the keto flu, or the, the, um, the adapting to ketosis, making sure that you're taking some digestive enzymes with your meal, so 20 minutes, a um, uh, half hour before you eat, taking a digestive enzyme is gonna help you with digesting those fats. Um, even if you forget, you can still take it afterwards, but it's best to kind of prime that pump, get the body ready for eating if you take them before. Drinking lots of water, a good goal for drinking water is gonna be about half your body weight in ounces a day. Uh, so if you're 150 pounds, that means 75 ounces a day, even more if you're exercising. Um, and then increasing your electrolytes, because you're going to be dumping those, if you remember that. So uh, a few different sources of electrolytes. Hemaline sea salt, um, this is an amazing way. You've got 84 plus trace minerals with uh, hemaline sea salt. So up to two teaspoons a day you can do. Um, so that's where putting it on like the avocado, um, you can even, if you're really having a keto flu, you can put that in some water and drink it, so you're getting a, 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 a big source of that. You can, if you don't like salt, you can do a multivitamin, so like the Maximize Living Men or Women's multivitamin is going to be an excellent source. Um, and even the greens powder, you're going to be getting tons of electrolytes, trace minerals with the greens powder as well. And one of the best things that I've found, and you hear lots of research about when you talk about the ketogenic diet, is doing what's called more of a cyclical based ketogenic diet. So what that means is that six days you're going to be in ketosis, so the high fat diet, and then you're going to pick one day out of the week, and that's going to be what's called your refeeding or your carb or protein levels are going to be increasing. So. Um, this is an important thing to really understand with protein. A lot of times when you start cutting out carbohydrates, you uh, start increasing protein. And what can happen if you overconsume proteins is that your body goes through a process called, that's called gluconeogenesis. And gluconeogenesis basically just means that you overconsume protein and your body pro uh, processes that by turning that into glucose. So eating fats, is the only way that the only thing that you can overconsume and not get fat versus proteins you can overconsume and still increase your glucose levels. And obviously, eating lots of carbohydrates that's going to boost your, your glucose levels as well. So one day a week you're going to choose uh, a, a day where you're going to increase up to 100 to 125 grams, and the typical uh, ketogenic day you're going to be roughly around 50 grams of carbohydrates. So you're doubling or even uh, almost, not quite, but almost tripling your amount for that day. So 50 grams or less, and this is with the 50 grams, some people can get away with more carbohydrates, some people can get a, have to decrease that. So protein or carbohydrates um, increased in one day. So what kind of meats do you want to be eating? So choosing the best source, grass-fed meats, grass-finished, um, getting some free-range chickens, eggs, Wild caught fish, salmon, I already mentioned a little bit about those, and even some good quality grass fed whey protein. The Max Lesson whey protein is an excellent source of grass fed whey protein. Um, and then carbohydrates. 
So probably your best bet with the ketogenic diet is eating a lot of the green leafy vegetables. It's going to be your biggest bang for your buck because you're getting lots of nutrients in those, not a lot of actual carbohydrates in those. Uh, so the green leafy vegetables, kale, spinach, um, the mixed greens, um, asparagus, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, um, broccoli, those are amazing sources for this. And notice that over here, the far left, you're not going to be seeing any uh, sweet potatoes or anything. So sweet potatoes and fruit, those are going to be things that you can be consuming on your refeeding day. Um, or increasing some proteins as well. So some things to look at if you're thinking of following the ketogenic perfectly, ketogenic diet perfectly, and you're still not losing weight, some couple things to look at. So you may not be eating enough fat. You may be eating too many proteins, because again, you've got gluconeogenesis, turning that into sugars. Um, and then eating too many carbs, um, exercising, kind of want to find that sweet spot where you're exercising enough, but not overdoing it. And then making sure, again, you're drinking plenty of water, and then you want to look at overall calorie intake. Maybe you're consuming way too many calories. So just some things to keep in mind with the ketogenic diet. So some excellent resources. Uh, Keto Clarity, this is written by Jimmy Moore. Jimmy Moore utilized the ketogenic diet to lose weight. He lost over 180 pounds uh, on the ketogenic diet. So first-hand experience and uh, has a blog, podcast, and uh, a lot of good information from that book. Um, and then if you're looking for more recipes, the ketogenic cookbook, um, amazing resource for recipes. So, <laughs> if you're doing the ketogenic diet and you want to increase your fat burning capacity, I recommend not doing this. <laughs> um, so, a way to actually increase your fat burning and um, still do the ketogenic diet is something called intermittent fasting. And if you've never heard about intermittent fasting, Intermittent fasting is when you are shortening your window when you're eating. So you're giving yourself a six to eight hour window to eat. The rest of the 16 to 18 hours, that's when your body is in a fasted state. So you're not restricting your calories because then that's going to have the opposite effect. Your body goes into starvation mode and you start holding on to uh, extra fat because your body again goes into to warming mode. So this, the basics are eating the same amount of calories, just shortening the window. So what that looks like on a typical day, so say you wake up at 7 a.m., you're going to wait until noon to eat, and then your first meal is going to be at noon, and then your window to eat is from 12 to 6 p.m. And I would recommend doing your biggest meal at the end of the day versus the beginning, just because um, the whole principle of the like the Thanksgiving diet or Thanksgiving day where you eat a big meal and you're pretty much sleepy and it's not because of all the tryptophan that's in the turkey, it's the fact that you purely ate so much food, your body is now tired. Um, so using that principle is going to help uh, get you ready for bed, um, so it's going to help make you sleepy and your body's in more of a absorbed absorptive mold at night versus the morning. Morning is more of an expelling mold because most people get up and have to go to the bathroom right away. Your body's getting rid of stuff in the morning. And then you're fasting after six and a big bulk of that fasting period, you're actually going to be sleeping. So it's a lot easier to fast when you sleep. Um, and then the, so it basically comes down to you're skipping breakfast. And when you're doing the ketogenic diet and you're eating your calories, again, it doesn't give you the, the free reign to go out and binge on whatever you want, pizza, burgers, fries, spaghetti. You still want to be getting the good quality foods in the diet, so eating the ketogenic diet. And then, uh, because if you are eating all the carbohydrates and everything, you're going to just negate any of the positive benefits that you're getting from uh, doing the intermittent fasting. And so one way you can hack your way in doing the ketogenic diet is still be getting um, some nutrients in the body, like I mentioned yesterday, where I went pretty much a whole day without eating, 
one of the, one of the things I did have though was uh, bulletproof coffee. So bulletproof coffee was made popular by Dave Asprey. Um, and what he or what he recommends doing is taking one to two cups of coffee or tea. So you can use the tea if you're not a coffee drinker. Um, definitely want to choose organic coffee. So spending the extra couple bucks to get organic because uh, coffee is definitely one of those things that's uh, most heavily sprayed bean out there. So go for organic. Taking some butter and you know you're like butter and coffee. What? Um, it's amazing. And then taking some of the MCT oil that we talked about. And then that's the basic recipe. So coffee, butter, MCT oil. You can add some cocoa powder if you like mocha, um, and, or even some stevia or xylitol. Um, I love the French vanilla stevia drops. Um, makes like a, a, a French like latte, a French vanilla latte. <clears throat> so you're gonna take all these ingredients, put them in a blender, and blend it up. And that's the key part with this, is blending it. So if you try to put it in a shaped bottle and try to drink it like that, it's not good at all, because the fat will come to the top, and it's not pleasant, I've tried it. So, <laughs> blending it, blending it, blending it. <clears throat> and the way that you can do this, and still be doing intermittent fasting, still be in ketosis, is because you're putting good quality fats in your body. So this is gonna, gonna be retraining your body to be a fat burner, and you're getting good quality fats in the diet. So you're gonna be burning more fat, and it's gonna help keep you full. The other thing you can do is what we call the max health shake. So taking some protein, taking uh, some greens, and taking some MCT oil, and putting in some water in a shaker cup, putting that all together, shaking it up, and you have a, a meal on the go. So um, if you're doing ketosis, probably want to do a little bit less protein, because again, too much protein, can start triggering the gluconeogenesis. So what, if you're doing ketosis, I would, um, like in the morning, I would do about half a scoop of the protein, and then a scoop of the greens, and then uh, again, a teaspoon of the tablespoon with the MCT oil, and then water. So this is one of those things on busier days, um, like Wednesdays are really busy days for us when we record radio shows. So it'll be morning shift, and then we'll go and record radio, and then back to shift, so we don't really have much time to eat anything. So this is my go-to meal replacer, and it you'll be amazed how much it fills you up. And you can add in one more thing to give you a lot more fats too, is adding some chia seeds, um, like a tablespoon of chia seeds. That's really gonna fill you up then. A lot of good fats in there. So some benefits. Um, of intermittent fasting. Able to be a fat burner, so you're gonna be able to lose weight. You're gonna heal your gut. Your body, or your gut only heals when it's in a rested state, when it's not having to digest. So if you've got that 16 to 18 hour window, you've got time for your gut to rest and digest um, <clears throat> all the foods. Resets hormones, helps regulate blood sugars, decrease hunger cravings. Again, we train your body to be a fat burner versus a sugar burner. So I hope I didn't overwhelm you too much with learning about the ketogenic diet. There's definitely a lot that goes into it. So I mean, feel free to come up, ask questions. Um, we've got the commitment card filling that out that will push you on an email list. If you have any questions, you can always email us and we can get those answered. Um, but I'm gonna bring Dr. Matt back up here and he's gonna be diving into the spine and nervous system. So. Let's give Dr. Matt a round of applause as he comes up here. Yeah. Raise your hand if you learned something new with Dr. Nick Ellison, right? Whoa! Man, it almost flies in the face of some of that we've learned uh, conventionally is how to eat and do things like that. Um, to run a 50 mile race, two twice and beat your time for the year before? <laughs> so put that out there. So uh, Dr. Nick's amazing. Um, I learn something new from him all the time. So it's, you know, just a paraphrasing Henry, Henry Ford. Um, I may not know all the answers myself, but I can surround my, myself with the people that do. And uh, that's part of having a strong room and learning and developing and growing that way. So uh, some great resources here for, with all our doctors. Um, we do recognize that, that uh, some of you may have some specific situations going on, like diabetes or, or heart disease or cancer.
ingredients or, you know, maybe there's some underlying health conditions that you have going on as well, and maybe a little fearful of stepping into some of, some of this stuff and, and wondering how that's going to affect your body, and I rightfully so, and I would certainly recommend that you would follow up with our team of doctors and let us guide you through and walk you through and make sure that this is done safely. If you really don't have any of those issues going on and you're uh, you know, not on any medications or things like that, then you know, go for it. You know, I want to see you guys get amazing results with this stuff. But uh, if you have any concern about that whatsoever at all, um, I do want you to know that we're here to help you uh, and guide you through that. We do recognize that there are people that are going to need that. So um, we're actually going to give you a special opportunity for that today. Uh, you know, at the end of my section here, so I just want to let you know that that is coming. So don't don't feel overwhelmed, like Dr. Nick said. Um, it's a lot of information, like Dr. Chad was talking about the, the fire hose and trying to catch all the water at once. If you feel that way and feel a little overwhelmed and not exactly sure where to start, let us help you out with that. That's exactly what we specialize in doing. We help um, thousands of people in the community at this point be able to change and transform their lives, and I'm confident that we can help you do that as well. But one of the things that we recognize is that for those that struggle to still get the results that they want with their health, whether it be with weight loss or whether it be with another disease process that they're dealing with, there's typically one key missing link that, that has been overlooked medically, and that's the nervous system. And most of the time, unfortunately, this isn't checked in our standard conventional medical model. So I want you to understand why this can literally be the missing key to unlocking your health potential and helping you get the results that you've always wanted. So if you've maintained weight loss resistance and worked out and you've tried, you know, maybe a ketogenic diet before, and you, you know, you, you're still throwing your arms up saying, yeah, I've tried all this stuff before and haven't gotten the results yet, this may be your answer to actually finally stimulating your body to get the results that you want. The nerve system is what I call the accelerator. In other words, it takes all the other lifestyle changes that you're, you're implementing and it accelerates the results that you get from that. And so, unfortunately, you know, I have to throw Dr. Nick's stuff out the side of the window. If your body is not healing and functioning correctly, which is controlled by your nervous system, you can put all the most amazing foods in your body to try and get it to trip into ketogenesis, and it's not going to go there if your nervous system is not functioning correctly. So I want you to understand that this is the foundation of what we teach, it's the fundamental of what we teach. It's why we get the results that we do with patients. It's why I've seen patients completely reverse their diabetes and come off insulin before. It's why I've seen people lose, you know, the 100, the 120 pounds, the, the 60, 70, the 40 pounds, you know, whatever it is, I, that I've seen them be able to restore their life, reverse cancer. One of the things that Dr. Nick did not mention about the uh, keto, uh, ketogenic diet is now the buzz and the research is all coming out and how impactful and effective it is with helping to heal cancer in the body. So that's another uh, ancillary benefit that you uh, can research and look up. And really some awesome stuff that's coming, coming through the, the pipeline of research right now as well. So I want us to dive into what health is really all about. I don't, I, the worst you know, thing that we could do is equip you with thinking that you know, if you just do this fancy diet and a little exercise, and then you're, you're, you're going to ride into the sunset and be healthy. You've got to have all five key essentials. They're called the five essentials for a reason. It's not the five pick and choose, right? So pick the ones that you want and then leave the other ones alone. It's the five essentials. And so that really is based on what health actually is. And so when we define health in our offices, we recognize that the real definition of health isn't merely the absence of disease. It's not just based on how your body feels or how it looks or what the number on the scale is or even your body composition for that matter. Believe me, I've known plenty of people that were able to fit in a small pocket because they died skinny or died light, right? That's, that's not the goal. That's not what we're looking to do, right? We want to build health and vitality within our body. And so what we what we come to, to understand through all the knowledge and research and application and treating thousands of patients in our offices and hundreds of thousands of patients across all the maximized living offices in the country is we found that you have to understand this key fundamental definition of health. And that's simply this, that your body is not, uh, if health is not merely the absence of sickness or disease, but it's your body functioning and healing at 100%. It's 100% functioning and healing from within. And that's very key wording, right? If we believe that the body doesn't need any health healing, it really just needs no interference. So if we can remove the interference nutritionally, we're 
remove the interference off the nervous system. Remove the interference, toxicity. The body innately wants to heal itself. Do you understand that? If, if I were to, if, if to fall off a ladder and break my arm and my arm was sticking out the side, straight out the side like this, if nobody realigned my arm, would it heal? Yeah, it'll heal. But it'll heal like what? It'll heal like that. It'll heal crooked, right? So the body always is in a perpetual motion of trying to heal. Point being this, is that if somebody goes in there and realigns that structure and allows it to heal the way that it's initially designed and intended to function, am I going to get the best use of that part of my body? Absolutely. Otherwise, I'm trying to do this, right? I'm compensating to try and work. And many times what we don't recognize is that problems and accumulated events and things like texting on the iPhones or the iPads or computer work all day, bending, lifting, twisting, maybe you're a construction worker and you're working with a jackhammer or a sledgehammer or something, all of these things that we do in our daily lifestyle start to add up over time and they accumulate these traumas into our, into our life. Or the big stuff like sports injuries and car accidents and things like that that may actually cause structural deviation within our spine. And those structural deviations, instead of allowing the nervous system to function the way that, it, that it's designed and intended to, looks like Roger Sperry. Roger Sperry dedicated 50 years of his life studying the intimate relationship between the spine and the nervous system. Amazing stuff. I think he even won a Nobel Peace Prize for his work. But one of his main findings, one of his biggest findings that he found, is that 90% of the health and the nutrition in the brain comes from the proper movement and mobility in the spine. Isn't that amazing? How important is it for us to make sure that our spine and our nervous system is able to function correctly? And that keeps every organ cell and tissue in our body doing exactly what it's designed and intended to do. So if you look in the mirror and you're seeing a shift structurally in your spine, the head's going forward, or you got, you know, uh, un unlevel shoulders, and the pelvis is rolling one way or another, can't see it or find it, come to the office, we actually do this digital analysis where you take a picture of your posture and we can draw out all the points and you'll be able to see it. How many of you have had that done in one of the offices before? Yeah, it's amazing. And a newer thing that we've incorporated in some of the offices, very powerful and effective tool in helping people realize the accumulated structural issues that have happened. And then on top of that, we do a nerve system scan, and then the nerve scan tells me where there's specific interferences that are caused by that structural misalignment. And here's what I want you to understand about that. When we have interference to the nervous system particularly, that is the most devastating thing that can happen underlying under the surface to, to the health and organ systems in our body. And I want you to see the hierarchy of healing in order, in order to fully encapsulate that, fully see that, right? So for instance, when you look at the things that our body absolutely needs for survival, we need food, right? Dr. Nick was talking about all the food stuff and the best practices when it comes to our foods. But let's be honest, we could go about a month without food, right? You can go for weeks without food, and your body would still be able to survive. You may not like it, it may not be fun, right? But you can do it. We can go days without water, right? Which, again, not fun, not something I would recommend, but we could do it if we had to. So the hierarchy of survival, hierarchy of healing, you go minutes without air. But if we were to cut the nerve supply off, so if I were to to, to take a scissors and cut the brain stem right there and sever the power of the brain from flowing through the nervous system out to every organ, cell, and tissue, what would happen to us all immediately? That's it. Done. Just like that. So completely cutting the nerve supply off kills all of the organs. So if I cut the nerve to the heart or cut the nerve to the lungs, that tissue is going down fast, right? It's not going to survive anymore. But if instead of completely cutting the nerve, when you have a structural deviation of the spine, it pinches down on the nerve. How many times do you feel that? What do you think the percentage is that we actually feel a pinched nerve in our body? Does anyone know? You know what the research shows? About 10% of the time. 10% of the time. So what's happening to the other 90%? There's something unhealthy under the surface that's going on in our body and we don't even know that it's happening, right? Very similar to the blood pressure. When do you feel blood pressure issues, right? When do you feel cholesterol rising up? When do you feel diabetes, right? We don't feel these things oftentimes until when? Until it's too late. And so the same thing is true with our spine. These structural shifts and structural deviations, they add and they accumulate over time. 
We don't necessarily feel that we feel wet until the damage is done, until they're already starting to put severe pressure on the spine and the nervous system, causing other sicknesses and diseases to develop within the organ systems of our body and keeping us from fully functioning and heal, healing the original innate design potential that we're created for, right? And so we can't go even one single second without proper nerve supply. I've been adjusting my own daughter, making sure that her spine and her nerve system has been properly checked since day one of life. Because I wouldn't want her to go one day without having the proper nerve supply to all the organs, cells, and tissues in her body. How valuable is that? Is there any moment in time when you would want your heart healing and functioning at less than 100%? Does anybody want that? How about for your neighbor, right? What do you think they would want? They want their heart healing and This is a key principle that most people have never heard. But if you were to go to work or to church tomorrow, you know, go, to, go to, to, to a, a big group of people and say, hey, did you know that this your bad neck here could cause a heart attack one day, what would they say? Yeah. Yeah. They say, that's absolutely nuts, right? They laugh, right? When you walk through it, you start to understand the fundamental way that our body is designed to function and heal, then you can see that when you put pressure on the nerve going to the heart, what's happening to the heart every day? Is it getting healthier or sicker? It is. It's getting sicker, is it not? And when our hearts get too sick, what happens to them? Dysfunction. They start to really disease. Maybe high blood pressure, blood pressure. When they get sick beyond that, what happens to the heart? It shuts down. And that's called a heart attack. Right? So these, these neurological issues, the spinal issues that we find, they do play off to cause disease. So just as Dr. Chad said, maybe a decision that you're making today, something that you're doing today, will in fact save your life. You just may not know it because it would have played out 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the road. But that's when you catch these things fix them now, because by the time you have a heart attack or have the cancer, guess what? You already have it. It's too late. It's too late for us. It's much more difficult for us to reverse that entire process. We'd rather take care of it now. It's not, not to say that we can't do anything about it at that point. It's just much more difficult. How your spine and your nervous system specifically relates to the weight loss principles that we're teaching today is very simple. Your nervous system controls your entire metabolism, does it not? It controls every organ cell and tissue in your entire body. Is your metabolic system going to function at its best when it's free and clear of interference or when your nervous system is sick and it, the interference is blocking the metabolism from doing what it's supposed to? So Bonnie and Budge is a perfect example of that. When they first came into our office, um, they didn't make any of the other lifestyle changes. Now, I'm not recommending that necessarily, but they just didn't. They didn't know how to do it. They were you know, still kind of fumbling around trying to figure it out, but they, they knew that they needed to show up for their adjustments and start correcting that part of their lifestyle. So they started with that. And they noticed after uh, a month, month and a half of care that the scale was starting to improve, right? They were noticing that there was some weight coming off. They noticed there were some body composition changes that they were seeing. And so they said, well, you know, they came, they talked to me, and they said, why is that, Dr. Tom? You know, what is that? I explained it to them. We clear off the nervous system, remove the interference, the power of the body, we'll run and control the body the way that it's supposed to, your metabolism works, your hormonal system will function better, your body starts to balance itself out. It's always pushing towards healing, it's always pushing towards balance, right? So then they started, they got really fired up and said, well, how can we improve this? How can we keep this going? They have never been able to lose the weight before, and they just kept slowly gaining and gaining and gaining, right? And so they, they started living the five essential system, and look at them now. Don't they look amazing? Isn't that awesome? Yeah. And they did that. You, you can see that. Some people are out of the shots, that's fine. If you look at their before and after picture, they didn't start this when they were in their 30s, right? So some people will say, well, I'm too old to do that, or my joints hurt, or my knees ache. And Dr. Derrick is going to come out and explain some modifications to exercise and things that you can do to not have that excuse be a limiting factor for you. But Bonnie and Bush did it, you can do it too, right? Look at Dave here. What do you think about Dave, right? Literally half the man he used to be, right? Amazing. Dave lost his first 50 pounds in the office adjustments alone. Nothing else. I'm going to show you his x-rays as to why that is. This is Dave's x-ray when he first came into the office. If you've been into our offices before, you know that that's not a healthy nervous system, right? He has forward head posture, and that structural issue actually strangles the spinal cord at the top. So the power in the brain can't flow through. Is his metabolism functioning correctly or no? No, it's not, right? And so we started putting that curve. You want that banana-shaped C curve back in the spine? 
That's what allows all the power in the brain to flow through and get to the organs of the body and let them function and heal correctly. So specifically for him, when he had this loss occur, these are the nerves right in here, right in the middle of the neck. The nerves go right out to what organ in your body? The gland actually. Where do they go? The thyroid gland. What's the thyroid gland most commonly known for? Metabolic function, right? It speeds up or slows down the metabolism based on what our caloric needs are for the day, what our energy needs are for the day, right? And so when we when he had interference on his thyroid here, was that working correctly? Was that a healthy thyroid or a sick thyroid? That's a sick thyroid. And even though he didn't have any medical tests to show that he had a thyroid issue, and here's what I want you to know: this is a subclinical issue because it won't it won't come up positive on a blood test or it won't until when. <coughs> Until it's too late, until the organs are way sick, right? Until it's really sick. And we don't want to ever let it get to that point. But is it functioning the way that it's supposed to when it looks like this? No, not a chance in the world, right? So we started correcting his spine and his nervous system. We took the pressure off the nerves going to his thyroid. And what happened to his metabolism? Metabolism starts to increase. He starts losing the weight. He hasn't made any of the other lifestyle changes yet. Dropped his first 50 pounds. Well, you lose 50 pounds, right? You've been heavy your entire life, and that's a big motivator. What did he start doing then? He starts doing the whole system. He starts making the other changes, and you see the results, right? How amazing is that? And he ended up losing over 120 pounds total of, of weight, you know, off his body with the systems that we teach. So, uh, round of applause for Dave. Right? Awesome stuff. Balancing of hormones improved by the brain as a result of chiropractic help maximize every new lifestyle change or healthy habit that you adopt. So you start eating healthier, healthier and applying the principles that Dr. Daniel is teaching. The chiropractic care is just going to accelerate the results from those. You start applying the exercise principles that Dr. Derek is going to teach. Your chiropractic care accelerates the results. Now, every healthy lifestyle that you're making helps to accelerate the results because it keeps every organ, cell, and tissue functioning and healing more towards its potential. Otherwise, we're just working with a sluggish system. Does that make sense? So you can still get the results, it just may take a lot longer. It's going to be a lot more frustrating. A lot more patience is going to be required, right? So I want you to see this short video just to understand how each segment in your spine is related to a specific or a specific area or a set of organs in your body just so you can see how big the picture is here. And if you have any symptoms whatsoever, what that tells me as a doctor of the spine and the nervous system, that there's a cause. Something is causing that issue. And the most likely cause is that that area of your body is not functioning and healing correctly. And we need to check your spine and your nervous system to determine if there's interference to the nerve that's keeping that area from functioning and healing. That, that's going to be one of the causes. So just watch this brief video to understand that. In the cervical spine, it can lead to headaches, migraines, lowered immune system, sinus troubles, hay fever, abnormal sleep patterns, eczema, hearing loss, tonsillitis, chronic cough, croup, pins and needles into the arms and hands, in the thoracic spine, asthma, functional heart problems, bronchitis, influenza, gallbladder troubles, liver conditions, blood pressure problems, indigestion, heartburn, gastritis, lowered immunity, allergies, kidney troubles, chronic tiredness. In the lower back, constipation, menstrual problems, bedwetting, knee problems, sciatica, backache, poor circulation, sore angles, weakness in the legs and cramping. Wow, I'm out of breath. And that's only a few. Amazing, huh? The, 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 the nervous system literally goes to every organ, cell, and tissue in the entire body. Chiropractic adjustments help restore hormonal balance and produce health favorable changes ranging from weight loss to improved overall function of the body. So again, every area of function is going to be improved. So if you're a patient in the office, raise your hand in one of our three locations. That's amazing. And you, so you guys have a testament to what we're talking about here. So for our guests that are here, um, you, 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 you may have some, some struggles or some health issues that you haven't been able to overcome to this point. And you're looking for the extra help, and we want to provide that resource for you to be able to do that. If you would open up your folder, and you'll see in your folder that there's a sheet. I believe it's a red sheet. Yes, the red sheet here, this peach colored sheet. Just pull that out for me and wave that up in the air if you could. Can we do that? Awesome. So if you 
don't have one, raise your hands high in the air. We'll make sure that you get, get one. Um, but this is your opportunity to come and follow up with us in the clinic at our January special. And so I just want to explain what that is and what it looks like so that we can help those of you that need additional resources. And we're going to get Dr. Derek in here. He's going to pump the room up with some energy. We're going to get you moving a little bit. So we have three office locations now. How amazing is that, right? We just keep growing and expanding. We can serve more and more of the community. Wouldn't this be amazing if the entire state of Wisconsin could have access to these fundamental lifestyle changes and we could see the results, right? Um, I, I just, I hate to see the, the tragedy that happened in our communities over the last couple of weeks. You guys know what I'm talking about with the, the high school kids that lost their lives this past week. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm not going to get into it, but I would, I would hate to know that some of those things could have been avoided by the principles that we teach. But it sounded like one of the young men, football player, trauma after trauma after trauma to the head and the neck and the spine. Think about the interference that happens there. Standard American lifestyle for a teenager, eating lots of sugar. You know, those things play out over time. You start seeing symptoms develop over that, maybe focus or concentration, they get a medication. You see where I go in the long run with that, right? You know, the, 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 the short of the story is this, you know, teenager felt troubled and ended up taking his own life. Those are the types of tragedies that make my heart bleed. I hate seeing that kind of stuff in our community. It's, it's unnecessary. And I, I would just love for us to be able to avoid those as much as necessary, you know, as, as much as we can. Am, am, I, am I talking to People that are in agreement with me on that, right? So anyhow, um, tangent for a second there, but if you need help, if you have health concerns, if you've never had your spine and your nerve system checked, now is the time for us to help you do that. Um, what you're gonna do is just fill out this peach sheet here and circle the time that works best for you. We do have to put a limitation on the dates that we can offer that. Um, so there are dates for this week and going into next week, depending on which version of the appointment sheet that you got. So uh, feel free to circle the date and time that you would like. You're going to transfer all of that information down below the perforated line. Circle the office that fits your needs best. We have three office locations. One in Brookfield, which is off of Capitol Drive and 143rd Street. Our second office location is in Waukesha. It's on the blue, uh, Brookfield Waukesha border there, just off of Highway 18, Blue Mount Road, where it splits into East Moreland. And then we have a, a, a location in Hales Corners as well, just off of Highway 100, where the Experience Fitness Plaza is. So depending on which location works best for you, make sure that, that you, you identify that on the sheet so we know how to best follow up with you, and make sure that we're confirming your appointment. Circle the date and the time that you would most prefer, and then we will confirm those. If there's any changes that need to be made, we have a lot of people that are likely to be scheduled to follow up appointments, so we'll follow up with you and let you know. We'll confirm you into the time and let you know what your first visit is going to look like. What we have is your first three visits are included in our initial evaluation, and that's for us to determine what your specific needs for care are. First, we have to check structurally and see what the issues are within your spine and your nervous system. On your second visit, we're going to actually do your first adjustment so that we can get some feedback and see how your body responds to care in our offices. And on your third visit, we'll go through the recommendations and any financial costs of care. We'll walk you through your x-rays and show you exactly what it is that we need to do to help your body get well and get this lifestyle moving in the right direction. So our January special for that, which is just a steal of all steals, it's just $77 for those first three visits. That's exams, x-rays, consultation, the whole enchilada, as they say, is all included in that. Uh, so all you have to do is fill out the information, and then if you would, just pass your sheets down into these two center aisles once you have those filled. And then Jen and Carrie, go ahead and wave in the back there. They're going to be coming down the aisle and collecting those for you to make sure that we can get you confirmed and scheduled for your evaluation in one of our offices. If you have any family members um, with you today, you can circle um, just two if two of you are coming in. So it would just be $77 a piece, so two times the 77 for that initial three visit value. Maybe they're not here today, we will extend that to them as well. So if you have a spouse at home or a child at home or a close family member or friend that you know needs to have this evaluation done and you want to bring them along for those lifestyle changes that you're going to be making, we will extend that to them today. Just schedule them into that same appointment time slot that you're going to be taking when we call to confirm and get all that figured out with you as well. So go ahead and take the time to do that right now. I'm going to give you just a few minutes to do that. Um, for patients, if you're planning to do any 
product purchases today. I want you to know that we have everything available today at 15% off, but you do have to have your orange sheet filled out in its entirety, just so that when we're exiting the building, we can keep things as efficient as possible. We're gonna have multiple checkout stations so that everybody uh, can get taken care of as efficiently as possible. I know nobody likes to stand in line and wait for things for a super long time unless you're at Disney, right? So we're gonna get those products to you as quickly as possible. Um, if you want to avoid the scavenger hunt and trying to find all the groceries and things that you will need for implementing the ketogenic meal plans that Dr. Nick was talking about, this little yellow sheet will bring you to our online grocery store where we have, uh, we've literally filtered through a ton of different partners to find the right partner that offers only organic and non-GMO foods for you guys. So we tried to get you a good resource and we even negotiated price size with them. So if you go through the link in our online store, which is on our website, it's listed right there on this yellow sheet, then you'll get the low price guarantees with that organization to help equip you with the resources that you need to actually pull this plan off. Okay, so we wanna make sure that we're equipping you guys with everything that you need to actually get the results that you're looking for. If you've got another chance, go ahead and pass your pink sheets in. Other than that, I'm gonna pass it off to Dr. Derek and he can start getting the fitness things, uh, things going, get a little energy in the room, we're going to get you up and moving here a little bit. Um, Dr. Derek has just uh, come on board, he's our, our newest member to our team of Max Health Chiropractic, he's working out at the Waukesha location, and uh, Dr. Derek's been an amazing resource, I've been learning a lot of great things from him as well, and he's a really upbeat, positive guy, you guys are really going to love uh, everything that Dr. Derek has to teach you today. So, without further ado, Dr. Derek, please come up, a round of applause for Dr. Derek, please. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, my job is to teach you how to get in shape so we can lose weight and feel great. How does that sound? Yeah. So, everything that I'm going to go over today, none of it matters unless your spine's actually lined up correctly. If you're exercising on a damaged spine, that's like going on a coast-to-coast uh, -to -coast trip, driving your car from the east coast to the west coast knowing that the tires are out of alignment. So we need to make sure that the spine's lined up correctly before we do any exercise. Let's get into it. So, today I want to take, take over some myths here and teach you what's the best way to get in shape and to lose fat. A common myth, it takes 45 minutes of, to be in the fat burning zone in order to lose weight. That's not true. Today I'm going to teach you exactly how to do that and what's the most effective way. All right, so we have a sidebar. We have some caution here. When you start to exercise, when you follow this plan, we're gonna to start to notice some changes. You might feel better. You may have less stress. Our blood pressure's gonna go down. We'll have a lower cholesterol. We'll have a better sleep, more energy. Our arms might start to get toned. Our thighs might start to get toned. Our butt might start to get toned. We might even see those, uh, those little Pebbles in the stomach, what are those called again? Your ab muscles, right? <laughs> so, a little, little caution before we get started here. Okay, who needs to exercise? Everybody. Everybody does, right? No matter how old you are. If you're a high school athlete, if you're a child, if you're uh, in, in your elderly, elder years, it's very important to exercise. As we get older, our bodies, they start to get more stiff and more rigid. So it's even more important to exercise. Up here we have a picture of someone with a hip replacement. Does that person have to exercise? Yes. Absolutely, we have to get motion into that joint. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna teach you some good ways to exercise if you've had had some joint replacements. Okay, so we all know that we're supposed to exercise. It's on TV, we learn it in school. The studies show only 20% of Americans exercise regularly. Why is that? Well, I made a bunch of excuses up here for that. Uh, a doctor once taught me excuses, they're like belly buttons. We all have them, they're goofy. So let's go over some of these excuses. Not enough time. I used to use this one very frequently. So, the exercise program that I'm gonna teach you today, it only takes 12 minutes to do. As a matter of fact, you're only exercising for six minutes, and we have six minutes of recovery time. So 12 minutes total. When, uh, when I plan my day, when I plan my schedule, 
I plan on going to work at 6.30 in the morning, and I plan on coming home at 6.30 at night. So I have that 12-hour chunk of period, that chunk right there. With that, I don't plan on grocery shopping, I don't plan on getting my hair cut, but I have that strict period just for work. I want to teach you to do that exact same thing with exercise. So, what we'll do, the, 12, the, the workout only takes 12 minutes. I want you each to block off a half an hour in your time slot. So in your schedule, find a half an hour, let's block that off. Can we all find a half an hour to block off in our time schedule? So, when's the best time to exercise? First thing in the morning, is it better to do it at lunch? Is it better to do it after work? The best time to exercise is whatever is the most consistent with you, okay? A personal trainer friend of mine, he once told me, if you exercise in the morning, you're 75% likely to stick to it. If you exercise during your lunch break, you're 50% likely to stick to it. If you exercise after work, you're 25% likely to stick to it. His rationale for that is things come up later on throughout the day. You might be at work later, you might have some chores to do, uh, the kids may have some activities. So it's very important, if we can, if we can exercise in the morning, there aren't going to be that many distractions from 5.30 to 6 a.m. or 6 to 6.30 a.m. So let's schedule that first thing in the morning. But I like to sleep in. I'm too tired. I don't want to exercise in the morning, right? When we exercise, it's actually proven to increase our energy levels. So if you feel like you're real tired, waking up a half an hour earlier and exercising, it's going to give you more energy throughout the day. You'll actually be able to sleep better at night as well. What's another good excuse? It costs too much, or I don't have a gym membership, I don't have any fancy equipment. Not a problem. I'm gonna teach you how to exercise at home, very cost-effectively. a matter of fact, the only things that you need are a physio ball and some resistance bands. So you should be able to get that for 20 to 30 dollars. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, we have a program for you. We're gonna teach you what to do, so you know what to do, you know when to do it, you know what exercises to follow. How about pain and joint replacements? If I just got my knee replaced, should I still exercise? Absolutely not. We don't necessarily have to exercise that knee, but we can still exercise the upper body. We have weights up to exercise. And I'm going to show you some ways how to do that coming up here with the doctors. They're going to, they're going to be my exercise models. So, if we do have a joint replacement, we want to make sure that we're still getting motion in that knee, that we're moving that knee, However, we need to do a lower impact type of exercise. This, uh, this excuse is one that I always used to use. I'm too hungry. My wife, she's the one that called me out on this excuse. She'd come home, I'd come home, she'd ask me if I exercised after work, and I told her, I'm too hungry. So she'd tell me, you're sitting here eating food instead of exercising? She thought it was a pretty lame excuse. I thought I'd put it up there and share it with you. I've used all these excuses also. How about this little guy with, uh, with no legs, no excuse, and your excuse is invalid. It's not stopping him from exercising. All right, what's the best type of exercise to burn fat? There's a lot of different stuff out there. There's weightlifting, there's running, there's marathon running, biking, yoga, Pilates, CrossFit. What we're gonna teach you is we're gonna teach you the best way to burn fat. And in order to do that, we have to break it down into two different systems. So we have, the aerobic system and the anaerobic system, also the, the max T3 exercise plan that we're going to teach you here today. So, what's aerobic exercise? Aerobic exercise is if you think of a, uh, a marathon runner, a long, dis long distance runner, that's going to be more of a, a slow jog, it's going to be a longer duration. We're having a lower heart rate, around 50% uh, 50, 50 of our heart rate and it only burns fat while we're actually doing the exercise. Our high interval max T3 exercise, this is going to be just the opposite. Think of this as like a, a 100 meter dash sprinter. It's going to be a real quick burst of exercise, only 20 seconds long. What does this do? Well, it's a short duration, so we want to be towards the 90% of our heart rate. It burns fat not just while we're exercising, but it burns fat the entire time for up to three hours. 30 hours, excuse me. What does that mean? If I'm exercising first thing in the morning, I'm burning fat while I'm exercising, then I'm going to work, I'm still burning fat, then I'm coming home, I'm cooking dinner, still burning fat, 
when I'm sleeping, I'm burning fat, I'm burning fat into the next day as well. So we're trying to work smarter, not harder here. It's nine times more effective than, uh, than aerobic exercise. It helps to increase your metabolism and also regulate your hormone. Dr. Nick, he was talking about your hormone production. We need to regulate those through exercise as well. Check out this chart here. So the dark blue, the steady state training, that's equivalent to that aerobic exercise with a long jog. When we use the anaerobic exercise, the max T3 exercise, that's going to be an afterburn effect of up to 30 hours. So we're burning fat not just while we're doing it, but the entire next two days. Okay. When it comes to exercise, anything is better than nothing. So we want to make sure that we're doing something, but let's be, let's, let's work smarter, not harder. Let's try to work as efficient as possible. Okay, weight loss keys. First off, it's important to follow a program. I used to walk into the gym, and I didn't know what I was going to do at the time, so I'd walk in there, I'd grab, uh, grab some dumbbells, start doing some dumbbell curls, and I'd take a lap around the equipment, see that the bench press was open, start doing the bench press, and I'd go get some water, I'd look in the mirror. I was spending more time trying to figure out what exercise I was going to do next, rather than being effective with exercise. So, the program that we're teaching you is called the Max T3 program. The reason why we want to do this program, it's actually been tested through a thousand different clients. It was put together by doctors of chiropractic and Olympians. This is a program where it's going to teach you how to get your metabolism boosted. It's going to teach you how to gain muscle mass. It's going to teach you how to burn fat. And it only takes 12 minutes a day. So, when we are exercising, we want to be at that 90% heart rate. So we're going to be pushing pretty hard with the, with the exercise. My 90% is going to be different than Dr. Nick's 90%. It's going to be different than all your 90%. So we need to, uh, we need to exercise at our own intensity, our own 90%. All right. How do we do it? So here's the way it works. We call it surge training, we call it uh, burst training, it's been called HIIT training, that stands for H-I-I-T, High Intensity Interval Training. We're exercising hard for 20 seconds on, then we're taking a 20 second break. We're exercising hard for 20 seconds on again, a 20 second rest period, then we're going 20 seconds on again. So if we add that up, it turns into two minutes total, one minute of exercise, one minute of rest. We're going to have six different exercises for you to do. Now, if you turn to page 10 in your booklet here, it shows you when to do each exercise. With that, the first day we do upper body, the next day we do lower body, the next day core, followed by surge, which is a full body workout. Then we have upper body again and lower body again. When you're not following a program, what happens is you start to do the same thing over and over again. You have your routine, you have the exercise uh, that you like to do, so you really don't track or see much improvement. With this program, you're going to see this improvement. You're going to, you're going to be able to see results because we're switching it around, we're tricking the muscles around, we're making sure that we're getting all muscles of the body. I like this program the most because we have people in here that have been exercising for years, some people who have never exercised before. On this program, this DVD that I'm recommending, there's three different types of people exercising at the same time. They're exercising together. The first person, they're a beginner. They've never exercised before. So it's their first time doing it. The next person, they're an intermediate exerciser, so they've been exercising a little here, a little, a little there. And the third person, there is what we call the advanced exerciser. In the video, most of it's Olympic athletes, because this was put together with the Olympic team. So you'll actually be exercising with Olympic athletes and trying to keep up with them. It's, it's fun. All right, so let's run through this. Let's teach each and, every, each and every one of you how to do this. Let's bring the doctors out. What better bottles to, uh, to have for our exercise here than our own doctors? So, what we'll do is we'll start, uh, let's pretend that Dr. Matt has got his shoulder replaced and his knee replaced. He still needs to exercise, correct? So, 
Zach or Matt, what we're going to do for you, you're going to be pumping your knees up towards your hand. <coughs> Try to get that heart rate up to 90%, okay? We're about 20 seconds on. So let's do uh, Dr. Nick here at the beginner. Dr. Nick, what you're going to be doing? You're going to be punching up towards the ceiling as fast as you can. Why don't you show the audience how to do that? As high as you can. All the way up. All the way up. There you go. Dr. Steven here, <coughs> let's say that his shoulders hurt now. So what he's going to do, he's going to have his hands about waist tight, and you're going to be bringing your knees up as fast as possible. Tight pants. Tight pants. <laughs> <laughs> That's an excuse, yeah, skinny jeans out there, I'm All right, then I want to bring one more person up, and advanced exercise here. Donna, can you please join us up here? So Donna, she's going to be our advanced exercise here. And you can just uh, walk right up around. What she's going to be doing is she's going to be, oh wait for her to come up here. Just so you know, Donna's, I 69 or 70 and she still does lots of running she does half marathons marathons and uh even a few ultra marathons everybody give donna a round of applause what we're going to have donna do is you're going to be running in place as fast as possible okay so let's get our heart rates going everyone i'll have you stand up with us please what I want you to do is let's try to follow, uh, let's try to follow Donna. If we can't follow Donna, then we'll work our way down. So we're going to go 20 seconds on as fast as we can. We want to have a high heart rate. Then we'll take a 20 second break. And we're going to run through this uh, for three sets. So make sure we're spaced out. Make sure we have enough room. If you need to hop in the aisles, hop in the aisles. All right. How about some music first? All right, in five, four, three, two, one, go! Good, looking good, looking good, boys. Donna, get your arm up here. Got your neck bumped to the ceiling, looking good. Get our tackles, everyone. Now, get those knees up, Dr. Steve, you're gonna get work. The stage is just too tight. Three, two, one, and relax. Get good, big breath of air in. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Looking good. Dr. Steven, those skinny jeans, you didn't lose. Good job, Dr. Nick. Ah, she's running like a champ over here. Ten more seconds. Keep up, ten more seconds. One more round. Now, here's where you do deep. This is the last round. Use as, as much intensity in this round as the first round. All right, five, four, three, two, one, and begin. Looking good. The knees up, nice guys. This is great. You guys looking good. Nice and fast, nice and fast. Five. Four, three, two, one, and relax. Good job. Drop the ball. Give me a high five. Good job, Dr. Nick. Everyone woke up a little bit there. That's fantastic. So, what we have available for you is on our website, the maxhealthfair.com. We have exercises on there already laid out for you. The best advice that I could give you would be to purchase the Max T3 DVD. In the DVD, it's going to have the beginner, the intermediate, the advanced trainer. I believe it's normally it's $35. It's on sale today because you're here. So who would pay $35 to lose 35 pounds? Kind of a no-brainer. $29.75. Wonderful. Discount for you today. I might have pushed something wrong here during the exercise portion. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, 
For those of you who haven't exercised much, and this is a new type of exercise program, there are a few things that we want to do to recover. We may notice some muscle stiffness or soreness. We might be using some different muscles that we haven't used before. So a good thing for that is to put some uh, magnesium gel on the muscles. It looks like this right here. It's going to help, it's going to help the muscles to relax. It's going to help them so they're not out as stiff and as sore. Dr. Nick, he taught you how to make the Max Health Shake. That consisted of the protein, it consisted of the greens and the MCT oil. That is great muscle recovery. That actually helps to build the muscles after your workout. We want to get that in within 20 minutes after you work out. The more muscle that we build, the more fat we're going to burn. The muscle helps to burn the fat. Oh, let's see here. The program, the uh, best advice I can give you is just pick up the program. The program is laid out for you so you know exactly what to do. The most difficult part for you, it might be just putting on some exercise clothes and putting the DVD in the DVD player and actually doing it. So that's all I have for you with exercise. There are more resources at the website. Now that we know what we should eat, now that we know how we should exercise, Dr. Steven is going to come up and he's going to tell us what not to put in the body, what toxins to avoid. So please give Dr. Steven a round of applause here. It's one of those that we don't maximize, we want to minimize in our office, okay? So the question I want to pose to you is, you know, how toxic are you? Are you very toxic? Think about our environment that we created for ourselves. How is the quality of our air? How is our water? How is our food? Is it food light? Is it food plus? So every day we're exposed to thousands of toxins and our liver is designed to filter that out. <laughs> so, your liver does a good enough job as long as it has the right nutrients, the right macronutrients, but it does get overwhelmed eventually. And some of the other um, things that we really don't consider or take into consideration is, you know, our medications. You know, they think, or they theorize, as much as 10 or 15% of weight issues can be due to the medications that we are on. Um, a lot of what that does is rewire the brain, kind of make you think you're hungrier than you think you should be, or it will suppress our metabolism so we're not burning the calories like we should be. So some of the examples are our SSRIs, such as Prozac, Paxil, our anti-seizure mood stabilizers, stuff such as Depakote, or even a depot shot for birth control has been shown to you know, cause weight gain in certain patients. But it's not the same for everybody. One medication might cause one patient to gain 15 pounds. The same medication won't hurt another patient. Why? Better food, better exercise, even getting adjusted will help your body remove that interference, detox, and you can live a you know, youthful, fulfilled life. But because you're on these medications, you shouldn't just automatically stop. They're prescribed for you for a reason from your prescribing medical doctor. You should go back to the source and say, hey, this medication is making me gain weight. Is there anything I can take in lieu of so that I'm not gaining weight this either? But I don't want to be placed on a second medication because of I'm gaining weight. Okay? Teflon. A lot of us put part on it for convenience, so we're not going to clean up afterwards. Uh, for some of those that are um, kitchen challenged, Teflon's uh, a marble. But it has a chemical called PFOA. Don't ask me to pronounce it. If you can't pronounce it, probably shouldn't be in your body. But it's a second obesogen, which means fat creator. It has been linked to increased body fat and weight gain in children. Uh, who were born to mothers who have high exposure to this obesogen. Um, basically, the classifications of obesogens you know, de derail your normal metabolic function. And they are found everywhere in our environment. They're found in flame retardants, they're found in your mattress and your pillow. 
uh, the cone and drywall insulation, and also popcorn bags. These same classifications of obesogens can um, stick the dust packet, I can't breathe it now, <laughs> can stick the dust particles, which is also in the air that we breathe. So safer alternatives to the Teflon cookware is your stainless steel pans, which can also double and function as a free set of weights. Stainless steel pans, or the ceramic coating cookware, also called green pans, which is, I found to be a lot easier to clean. Uh, Teflon has a tendency to stick food, especially if you tend to overcook you know, your eggs. Tap water contains carcinogenic chlorine and chlorine, or chlorine. It's found in your tap water, water that drinks itself found in our showers, which is not likely to filter the sources. Um, also contains obesogens, once again. <coughs> Pesticides, if you live out in the country, nitrates. There's also been shown that there's pharmaceutical residues in our tap water, you know, if we live more so here in the city. So what does that do to our bodies? You know, it gives us dry skin, eczema, brittle hair, weight gain, cancer, asthma, respiratory issues, and the list can go on and on. So the question I ask you is, are you toxic? How toxic are you? Do you have brain fog? Are you walking into the room and you forget why you're walking into the room? Are you fatigued? Are you tired all the time? Are you, do you suffer from depression? And once again, I think it was talked about earlier, do you have weight loss resistance? Which means that you've done numerous exercise programs, haven't lost the weight. You've done numerous dietary changes, haven't lost the weight. That is weight loss resistance. And it's usually caused by six different systemic factors. And it's always a combination of more than any one of those. But the more we test and we investigate, and we can narrow it down to one and get you improved and feeling where you need to be. So for example, if you have such hormonal imbalances such as your thyroid, you're gonna have this overall plumpness or even an apple shape, because your body shape can also dictate, at least point us in the right direction of what we need to investigate. You might be pear-shaped, which would be if your adrenal or even your ovary. Or you just might have an overall impaired detoxification, your liver's not functioning correctly, which would be this gentleman here on the, my left, your right. We see numerous of these people walking around in the state. We call this a Milwaukee goiter. We all know people. We see them all around our, in our society. These are the gents, big belly, no derriere, and chicken legs. Just means that their liver is not processing the way it has been trying to process. But we don't guess on what's wrong with you, we test. And so we do a lot of metabolic testing in our offices to see what's going on. And then we can make the supplemental and dietary recommendations to get you healing, get to remove that and to get you where you need to be so you can start losing that weight. So I have five action steps for you, four of which are brought to you by the letter P. <laughs> and number one is P. We need to be drinking at least minimum eight cups of water a day, 64 fluid ounces, or half your body weight at minimum. So if you're 200 pounds, you should be drinking 100 fluid ounces of water a day. Kidneys do a remarkable job of removing toxins and filtering out your blood. That's what they're there and that's what they're designed for. But you don't want to be drinking tap water, as explained prior. Also don't want to be showering in the same you know, shower with your same tap water because your skin is your largest organ on your body and it will absor absorb those same toxins that are found in our drinking water. So the best option for you is at minimum, get a charcoal filter such as a Brita filter, a shower filter so you're not showering with that, or to the you know, extreme end, get a live reverse osmosis filtration system installed in your house and remove at least 99% of those toxins that you know, we're subjugated to every day. Second step, poop. We should be having at least one, two, two bowel movements per day. I'm sure some of us would be 
happy if we can have one, two bowel movements a day and that joy and peace of the five minutes in the bathroom. But if you're not having a bowel movement, then you might want to start increasing changing your dietary recommendations. You might want to start, once again, drink plenty of fluids because that's going to help push things out of your system. Increase your fiber content. You should be at least having 35 uh, grams of fiber per day. If you're still not making those deposits, <laughs> then increase your fiber, start taking probiotics, balance out your GI system, make sure the healthy bacteria are there, increase some flax seeds, your omega-3s, and also take some magnesium capsules to help you know, push things, flush things out. Third step, perspiration. Dr. Nick or Dr. Derek talked about how we all should be exercising. We should all be sweating at least three times a day. Once again, your skin is your largest organ, it's also your largest detoxifier. When you sweat, you can sweat out your heavy metals, such as lead, mercury, or even organic chemicals, such as PCDs. A life hack you can also do is sit in a hot tub, or not hot tub, but sit in a sauna or a steam bath for a good 10 minutes. That's going to help you sweat, help you detox. Um, it's been shown to reduce stress, balance out your nervous system, and increase your circulation. Four step, pranayama. I think that's how it's pronounced. Or breathing. We take our lungs for granted and a lot of us are shallow breathers. We use our shoulders to breathe. What I want you to do is to learn how to breathe with your belly. You need that oxygen coming into your body. It's needed for energy production. It's also needed to, for detoxification as well. If you're not breathing well enough, you're not getting that oxygen. So I want everyone to teach you how to breathe. Hands on your belly button. I want you to breathe out, push your belly in. Breathe in through your nose, push your hands out. You should be looking like a soccer player, if you're a friend. <laughs> Repeat that for at least five minutes every day until it becomes learned memory that you are now a belly breather and you're utilizing your entire lung capacity. And the fifth step, we have an office protocol called cell detox. It's a two-fill system. We do recommend, at minimum, a four-month protocol. It, what it's going to do is one of the pills is going to go into your cellular level. I believe it's glutathione is the antioxidant. That's going to help remove that toxin from your cell. The other pill is going to help bind up that toxin so you're not reabsorbing it into your body. So it flushes out either through your pee or through your poop. So, I hope some of this makes sense to you. I mean, each and every one of us doctors can talk for hours and hours and hours on each of these five essentials. So, this is just a taste of what we know and what we can offer for you. But all this knowledge won't do you any good if you don't implement it, okay? So, here's Dr. Trump, we're going to close it up. Well, thank you all so much for coming out today. I just want to equip you with some logistic things as we send you off. I realize that we're running over a little bit with time, so um, I'm going to make this part quick. So two minutes, and we'll, we'll have you on your way here. Um, page 26 in your guide, this lists all the challenge rules for implementing the 28-day challenge. As I said at the very beginning, I'm going to challenge you to follow through with that to the best of your ability if you're applying these action steps you're going to see results. We're, we're confident of that, um, as evidenced by the many, many people that we've been able to help in our clinic. So page 27 would actually be your tracking sheet. So each day that you do your exercise, for example, you go in there and check off the exercise box. box. Each day you're eating the ketogenic, ketogenic meal plan, you check off the ketogenic box. And you tally all those up. There's points associated with each one of those. So that on page 28, you will tally up your, your points. 485 total points, and so obviously the closer that you get to that, the better you're implementing the five essential system and uh, getting the results that, that, you're, that you're looking to get. We are going to actually have two categories for prizes for our winners at the end of the 28-day challenge. One will be percentage weight loss, and so for those of you that are looking to do this for the weight loss and the big improvements in that area, uh, feel free to compete for that particular category of prize. And then the other side will be the points challenge. So even if you don't have a ton of weight to lose or any weight at all to lose, 
living and implementing the five essentials, we want to reward, reward that as well. So we will have uh, two categories for prizes, and uh, the prizes are a $200 uh, credit towards uh, any product or supplement purchases or things that we offer through our offices. So um, we're going to be doing two of those prizes, so $200 for the winner in the points challenge, $200 for the winner in the uh, percentage weight loss. So just a little incentive there to help you uh, implement these. And obviously that's not the real reason you do it. The real prize is that you're healthier and you're moving towards your, your ultimate uh, life. Remember, keeping the end in mind. Um, some of the resources that we have to help you all out to stay plugged in. Our next workshop in our offices is going to be our Heart Smart workshop. I think I have a slide here for that. Yes, uh, so we have community dinner on February 8th. If you know anyone that needs to start being equipped with resources and tools and the expertise that you've started learning today, bring them on out for one of our community dinners. We're going to introduce the model of care to them, give them the same opportunity to start living this lifestyle. Um, just register for that on the website. Um, you can go to maxhealthcairo.com, and that, all the website information is listed here in your guide. And then in February, we have our Heart Smart workshops. So if you know anybody that has blood pressure, cholesterol, or heart disease type issues, or you just want to prevent those issues from happening, then make sure that you're registered for the Heart Smart workshop in February. We have three dates and times and locations for that. There's no excuses not to make it. If you want to get out there, then we try to make it as convenient as possible for you. Um, with that being said, the only other thing that I would ask is if you would please fill out your commitment card if you are planning to do the 28-day challenge that helps us best interact with you and keep up with you and support you um, in the ways that we best know how at this point. And then um, if you know anybody offhand that you'd like to invite to the dinner, you can also write your name and number in there when you turn in those cards and we'll extend an invitation on your behalf for them to come out to the dinner as well. Um, Guys, thank you so much for your time and attention today. I appreciate you taking the time out of your, your busy schedules coming out on a Saturday to start to change and transform your lives. Um, us as doctors just absolutely love doing this, so uh, we really do appreciate the time and effort that you're going to take to go and put into the challenge and implementing it. Um, the 28-day challenge actually starts officially on Monday, just so that we're clear across the board on that. So you get the rest of today and tomorrow to... I've had patients literally come up to me and tell me, well, those are my sinful days then. I'm just going to go out and do whatever it is that I need to do to get it out of my system. I would encourage you not to go and binge worthy like that, but um, if you got to do it, you got to do it, get it out of your system. Officially, we start Monday. What I was going to say is it gives you the time to get your resources and things together, get your meals prepped and everything that you need to start off fresh. The toughest part is week two or week three for most people. They start off with a bang, so if you plan and prepare for that difficulty, then you can keep the momentum going through the whole 28 days. So those are my quick tips for you to try and get the best results. Um, guests, make sure you hit the welcome guest table if you have not registered to come in or, or signed up for an initial evaluation in the office. You still have the opportunity to do that on your way out. Please talk to one of our uh, team members and they can help you get scheduled for that. Resources sheets need to be filled out fully, everything in there, um, so that, that we can get that done as efficiently as possible. Make sure you set your goals, turn in your commitment card, track your progress, and I'm done. Thank you guys so much for your time. Have a blessed day. Prepare for a big, uh, a big talk here, saving lives. Make sure you get the power on. Looking good. <laughs> Yeah, Dr. Chad's feeling real good right now.